from the capital city of Charleston, West Virginia, this is Inside West Virginia Politics with Mark Curtis. Inside West Virginia Politics is brought to you by AARP West Virginia, your ally for real possibilities in the Mountain State. Good Sunday morning, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Inside West Virginia Politics. I'm your host, Mark Curtis. We're down to one week left in the West Virginia legislative session, and it's crunch time. I want to introduce the chair of the House Finance Committee, Delegate Eric Householder, Republican of Berkeley County. Great Good. to have you on the show. Good morning, Mark. Good to see you. Obviously, when I say crunch time, the budget is the big thing. Uh, you're the House Finance Chair, so you're in charge of the budget. What are we looking at this year in terms of what we can spend uh, in general? Because we have pretty good projected surpluses compared to the last couple of years where you had huge deficits. First off, Mark, I want to thank my staff. My staff has been working tremendously hard all session long. Uh, we also, we have a great finance team, all the delegates that are on this committee. I, I just can't express how happy that I've had every member willing to work with us, willing to get these bills to, th to the floor. Because remember, as we pass legislation, every one of these bills could or could not have a fiscal impact to the budget bill. So it's important for us to try to get bills out early, talk, have bipartisan support. That way it makes it a lot easier easier for us to have the framework for the budget. So. I know you have to speak in generalities on some of this because it's a, budgets are moving targets, things change in a dime, but uh, what are we looking to, to fund? What are our funding priorities this well, year? Well, let me back up a little bit. Sure. The governor's revenue estimate was $4,675,000,000. Uh, we've got the estimate right around four billion six hundred and sixteen million. So we've had some uh, cuts to the governor's introduced budget, okay. right around fifty million dollars in cuts. But we've made about thirty-nine million dollars back in uh, as improvements. So. For, for the most part, we have a great budget, I think, that the uh, whole Finance Committee is proud of, and I think we're, we're going to see bi bipartisan support on the floor for it. One of the things the governor introduced, it was really his first priority, is getting another 5% pay raise for not just the teachers and school service personnel and state troopers. He wants a 5% increase for all state employees, and I realize a lot of that comes uh, in the budget. Is the money going to be there for those raises, near as you can tell right now? We have passed the governor's pay raise. Now, keep in mind, in that revenue estimate that the governor has set, those pay raises are included. Also, what was included was the elimination of the social security tax. So those two items, those two big bills that we've already passed, they were already factored into the governor's revenue estimates, so we're fine. We've passed them both. They're, they're sitting on the Senate side now, so it's hopeful that the Senate will take them both up and pass them. Yeah, i got to do a little shout-out to our friends at AARP since they sponsor our show. They were obviously big advocates in getting rid of the Social Security tax uh, in West Virginia. How important is it that we do that, and where do we stand compared to most other oh, states? It, that was a, it was tremendous. I'm glad we had bipartisan support. Uh, once again, it's much needed tax relief for our seniors. Uh, yesterday, we also had another big tax relief bill. We passed the coal severance tax reduction. We went from 5% to 4% for some of our struggling coal companies. They've been taking it on, their, on the chin. Uh, you know, we have an industry that's teetering on a crisis. So we saw that, we reacted to it, we reduced the severance tax from 5 to 4% yesterday, and then it goes down an additional 1% the following year. So big day for uh, a lot of people in West Virginia. There will be critics on that, though, that say in the last couple of years, the coal industry as a whole has bounced back, uh, especially with the support of President Trump. And, and the critics say, why give them a tax break at a time when their industry is back on the upswing again? Well, President Trump made several promises that he wants to put coal miners back to work. West Virginia is an energy producing state. We have a lot of coal miners uh, that, that work in this state. We have a lot of ancillary businesses that follow the coal industry. It's an important aspect for our budget. Right now, coal severance uh, tax revenues are right now approximately $52 million higher than what the governor even estimated. So I don't see any impact doing this $30 million reduction. Uh, we're down to a minute. Uh, the last time I heard talk to the governor, he was projecting approximately a $185 million surplus. Right. Where is that money going to go? Or are people coming to you, agencies, and saying, backfill my budget that was cut two years well, in a row? Well, keep in mind, most of those uh, re that revenue surplus, the governor is spending on PEIA. We've, we passed a $105 million supplemental. Uh, that's going towards teachers for the year 2021. That's going to shore up our PEIA for the next three years. Uh, there are several other supplementals like uh, regional jails and so forth. We, we, we've, we've passed, I, I believe we, we have a great budget that's going to 
have bipartisan support across uh, both houses. All so. right. With a week to go in the legislature, we wish you good luck, Delegate Eric Householder, a Republican of Berkeley County, Chair of the House Finance Committee. We're going to hear from the Democratic side of the aisle when we come back. Stay with us on Inside West Virginia Politics.